Cork finishing that game with 10 fellas wearing gloves on the nicest day of the year for football. Says it all really is what James O'Donoghue says there. Former Kerry footballer himself, former All-Ireland winner himself. An interesting take there from James O'Donoghue on the Cork footballers. Definitely a bit of a sly dig, it must be said, from James O'Donoghue. And a strange take in many ways, you know what, because... I don't really get it really what like what is he what what does he exactly mean there what exactly is he trying to prove by saying that you know the the, the cork footballers are are all wearing gloves and in summer and all the rest uh, a strange take it must be said there from former Kerry footballer James O'Donoghue. who I'm not too sure if he's fishing for likes I'm not too sure if he's just trying to uh you know, I suppose like the fire, like the, the fumes to the flame that is the Cork and Kerry rivalry. And of course, let's not forget one of the most famous Kerry footballers of all time and arguably one of the greatest Kerry footballers of all time in uh, Kieran Donaghy, who, of course, wore gloves all the time as well. So, yeah, just a, a little bit of banter there, I suppose, from James O'Donoghue, a little bit of crack, a little bit of a laugh nonetheless um and, and certainly for me when you look at a, a tweet like that from james o donahu you know what i would say in in regards to that really is especially with a lot of players who are wearing gloves you know you you do forget that a lot of these lads are obviously amateur athletes so probably a lot of them out there wearing gloves are obviously getting some form of maybe sponsorship deal from from wearing those gloves um and look we've all played gaelic football before we all know sometimes that we all have our own preferences our own ways of playing and uh, our, our our own do's and don'ts so an interesting way to start the show there um and certainly from a, a james o'donoghue and a kerry perspective i'll be interested to know your your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below um it certainly was a, a tweet that a lot of people got very upset very angry over but welcome back to the channel my name is aaron this is the fan reaction show where we look at some tweets some reaction from fans journalists players absolutely everyone and um yeah we go through all the big talking points from the weekend's action there will be a football review podcast out tomorrow with former Kerry footballer liam brosnan so stay tuned for that one make no mistake about that it should be an interesting one discussing Kerry in greater detail. But uh, we are looking at some reactions, some tweets, all the rest. It is the fan reaction show. Let's do this. Seamus Conway says Rory Canavan is only on because of his father, said absolutely nobody ever. And Joanna Reardon says here, I want studies to be done on the Canavan family. Peter is great, Dara is great, but Rory, wow. And that is the next topic of conversation, really. And obviously, we're, we're looking through some tweets here in regards to that. And I mean, that performance from Rory Canavan once again in uh, a Tyrone shirt at under 20 level, I mean... You know, obviously, we we know how much of a of a talent that Peter Canavan was, and obviously, you know, one of the greatest footballers of all time, and, and certainly a lot of people believe that he is the greatest forward of all time. I would certainly put him in the conversation. I think Brian Brogan is not far off. I think David Clifford is certainly maybe on the run in towards, uh, you know, towards being in that conversation, if not potentially surpassing both of them, but. You've obviously got Dara Canavan, who's come into the throne senior footballers in the last couple of years, was a, a big part of the under-20s as well. Let's not forget when uh, Tyrone reached uh, an All-Ireland semi-final, actually, and got beat by Kerry in 2020. I remember he was a part of that team from, from what I remember and obviously played a, a bit of a role in the senior team as well. And um, this new under-20 football team, this new uh, Tyrone team, the next generation of players that is coming through and Rory Canavan, certainly looks 
a special, special talent. And Tyrone, look, we know they've had their issues in terms of their senior team this year. They've had a lot of players opting out. They've had a couple of injuries as well, obviously, Matty Donnelly and Richie Donnelly. But with the fact that the All-Ireland Under-20 final is this Saturday, which we will get onto because there has been a little bit of controversy, certainly, in terms of the uh, the venue that has been chosen, the time slot, and obviously given the fact that it's not in Crow Park. But uh, Rory Canavan, in general, obviously a part of that Tyrone under-20 team, but he'll actually be eligible for the Tyrone senior footballers by the time that the qualifiers comes around. Now, there is a bit of a crazy, stupid rule that I'm sure you've already heard of. A lot of people, you know, GA folk would have already heard about it. But for those who don't know, um, once any player takes any sort of participation in the under-20 football or hurling championships, they then are in a, ineligible for the senior team. Bit of a stupid rule, but of course, we know in the GA there are certainly a lot of very, very strange decisions, strange rules and strange occurrences that happen in this sport. But um, yeah, so that, you know he's obviously not eligible as of right now for the Tyrone senior footballers. But by the time the qualifiers comes around, could he make it into the team? And that is a, a real, real question. Lee Costello says, Rory Canavan is outrageous. DL says, I'll say it again, Rory Canavan is a phenomenal player. And I did watch, you know, the majority of that uh, under-20 semi-final between Tyrone and Kerry. I didn't see the final 10 to 15 minutes just because of, uh, I'd obviously switched it over to Limerick and Tipperary, which was just about to, uh, which had just started around that time period. Um, and Kerry were actually in front by the time I turned it out or when I turned it over. So obviously a, a tremendous turnaround that we seen on the Sunday game last night, just how well Tyrone did play. And, you know, tremendous players coming through. And Canavan in particular, like just a wand of a right boo, brilliant on his left as well. You've seen that uh, sideline cut he hit against Cavan as well. I mean, that was a tremendous point in that under-20 Ulster final. So a special, special talent. And let me know, in the comments live or even down below after the stream, you know, for any Tyrone fans watching, how excited are you to see Rory Canavan coming into the team? And does he get in the team for the qualifiers? That is the big, big question. Does he maybe, you know, I doubt he comes into the starting 15, but I think surely you put him on the bench because, you know, to have him, you know, in your locker, when a lot of senior footballers wouldn't be aware of him either in terms of his talent, you know, it would be uh, it would be an interesting one. And certainly in the qualifiers, you know, for Tyrone to sort of get an extra forward on board, to get an extra player on board for their tilt at this, um, you know, tilt at their defence of the all Ireland Senior Football Championship. Uh, having him in the team could be absolutely key. Uh, Mickey Gallon says Rory Canavan's definitely a chip off the old block, a scorer machine. And Darren O'Sullivan says, can Rory Canavan... Uh, go straight into the Tyrone senior squad after next weekend. He'd be a big addition to the panel. And that's exactly the point, isn't it, that Darren O'Sullivan makes there, I mean, to uh, to get him into the squad for the qualifiers. And obviously we'll see that draw. I think it's next Monday, I think it is. Um, and there's a whole host of teams Tyrone could potentially face. I mean, they could get a Mayo. We could see a repeat of the all Ireland final. They could get big rivals, Armagh. They could have a potential trip against or a potential face off against their old manager there is, that is Mickey Hart there's all sorts of interesting storylines for Tyrone going into those qualifiers and um very very excited indeed to see the uh, qualifier draw happening on uh, on Monday week Rory Canavan says oh or sorry not Rory Cahar uh, Kane says Rory Canavan is a frightening operator and he certainly is he certainly would put a lot of fear into the minds and souls of uh, opposition defenders. Make no mistake about that. And Seamus Conway says, "Yeah, we we already got to. Uh, we already we already read that one out there." So, yeah, you know, tremendous talent, tremendous footballer. And Tyrone, for me, as I said, I think they're the favourites for the under twenty All Ireland Championship. You know, I've seen bits of Tyrone against Cavan, and look, they you know, fluffed their lines a bit in the first half. Cavan missed a lot of chances and, you know, maybe on another day, Cavan could have came through and won that game. But, and in the Kerry game, Kerry were very much in control for a large parts, but Tyrone, you know, rallied late on to, to turn it around. And I think they're a very good side. Look, Kildare will not be easy. Um, Kildare have obviously taken out awfully Dublin and a relatively comfortable victory against Sligo in the semi-finals as well. So um, certainly a lot of, uh, a lot of positives 
to take from a uh, from a Tyrone perspective. And speaking of that under twenty All Ireland final, because certainly a lot of controversy surrounded the venue that has been decided to be chosen. And uh, at this moment in time, it is set for Carrick and Shannon, but there obviously have been a lot of reports that it's going to get moved to. Kings Pan Breffney Park, and, and maybe it has been moved by the time, um, you know, or, or in the next, you know, couple of hours, or potentially by tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. But John O'Connor says here, when I was 18, 19, I always dreamt of playing an All Ireland final in Carrick on Shannon. Well done to all involved. Um, and yeah, a very, uh, a very bizarre decision, certainly, in my opinion, to. To, to have that All Ireland final in Carrick and Shannon. Look, under 20 finals have been around the country. They haven't always been in Crow Park, you know. Um, I think Dublin played Cork, I remember, in 2019, I think it was, or 2018, and it was in Port Leash. So they haven't always been in Crow Park, but a lot of finals have been in Crow Park. You know, Offaly, Ross Common last year was in Crow Park. I think the 2018 All Ireland final, uh, under 20 All Ireland final, was in Crow Park as well. So a little bit strange that they, they are moving the under 20 finals, you know, all around the country whether it's to try and improve local businesses in, in those specific counties, I'm not sure, but it is a bit of a strange one. And, you know, from what I know on Saturday, I don't think there's anything on. I don't think Ed Sheeran's playing or there's no concerts on in Crow Park. From what I know, I could be wrong on that. So not sure why it isn't in Crow Park. Um, you know, surely Tyrone would want to play in Crow Park and travel down. I know it's a little bit more convenient for Kildare, but yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? It's an interesting one. Um, and certainly one that has split a lot of opinion. And uh, really unofficial Kildare GEA says the Kildare v Tehran under-20s all Ireland final has been fixed for Carrick on Shannon this Saturday at 5pm. A reminder that this is what is waiting for you if you need to use the toilets on the terrace side all Ireland final. I mean, to be fair, I'd say the majority of grounds you go to up and down the country have toilets very similar to that. Maybe not as bad as that, but um, similar enough. The toilets in Crow Park, by any stretch of the imagination, are not, um, you know, are, are certainly not amazing. But look, you don't, you don't f and go to the to the matches for quality of toilets. I mean, this isn't a five star hotel. You, do you know what I mean? You go for the game. Obviously, you don't really care. I mean, you're usually half slush by the time you go into the games anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference. Um, do you know that way? But look, obviously, yeah, putting it in Carrick and Shannon, no disrespect, obviously, to, to Leitrim or to, you know, anyone who, who who goes to that stadium on a on a regular basis. But just, you know, it doesn't really make sense, really. It's a long way to travel for Kildare. It's quite far for Tyrone, obviously, as well. Um, and with the fact that, obviously, the senior footballers are playing in Crow Park at quarter past two on a Sunday, you know, you'd want to be a, a seriously, seriously dedicated Kildare fan to want to actually go and uh, and watch both games, you know, because you're talking about what what is it from Kildare to Leitrim? I mean, nearly a four hour journey, give or take, you know, up and back, and then you obviously have to go to Dublin, which isn't far away to be fair from Kildare, so that isn't too bad. But you would want to be a very very dedicated fan indeed. Fintan O'Toole says here, GA announced Carrick and Shannon to host Kildare v Tyrone. Next Saturday in the All Ireland Under 20 Football Final at 5 p.m., Kings Pan Breffney had been suggested as a venue. Walker there had been hoping for Crow Park, and yeah, look for me, like especially with the fact that it is a grade right below senior level. All the minor finals are are usually in Crow Park, um, and the Under 20 finals for me should be in Crow Park. You know, it is the the main, it is the national stadium in the country. It's the biggest stadium in the country. It is the GA Stadium, I believe all big events and big finals should be held there. You know, the All Ireland Senior Football Finals should be there. Um, you know, the 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 hurling final should be there, the ladies football final, the camogie final, minor finals should be there. Sure, the Leinster finals, maybe that's a, a conversation for another day. Maybe, maybe they can move that 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 out of uh Leinster because obviously Dublin have a significant advantage when they play, you know, every game in Crow Park and bloody bloody blah. We're not gonna go into the ins and outs but again for me you know i've said this on other podcasts and i don't want to go too much into a bit of a rant here because it is a it's a monday night and you know i'm feeling a bit tired so it would be uh, it would require a lot of effort to be honest but 
you know, I remember during the lockdown, I remember during COVID, I felt like, do you know what, the GEA had maybe turned a corner a bit. I felt like we were coming out of the dark ages. You know, we were games were being shown that maybe we wouldn't normally get to see. There was streaming services up there, um, updates, you know, for, for a lot of different games, a lot of podcasts from Sky Sports, RTE, all the rest. You know, all these major broadcasters doing their part to promote the game um you know and, and a lot going right you know double headers you know i think you had the the ladies leinster final that was on just before the men's leinster final um i think it was a double header between dublin and mead maybe it was and just things like that a lot of things that made logical sense but it feels like this year we've gone right back to square one and we've gone backwards you know and again just a lot of bizarre decisions in gaelic games at the minute from the under 20 rule which doesn't make any sense whatsoever um to this one as well obviously you know playing the game in Carrick on Shannon and or, or, or not even that just not having it in Crow Park I think is more the the main thing it just uh yeah it just doesn't make much sense at all um Kira Lynch says here Rory Canavan looks better than his brother Dara yeah look I mean Dara Canavan was certainly lighting things up at under 20 level when he was in a Tyrone jersey maybe not quite to the same extent from what I remember, I mean, but Tyrone fans will certainly know more about that than me. You know, I haven't probably seen enough of Rory Canavan and Dara Canavan, to, to be fair, to make it an accurate assumption. I do believe they're Errigal Kieran footballers. Uh, if I'm if I'm right, hopefully I'm right on that one. I might be wrong. Uh, feel free to correct me on that one if I'm wrong. But certainly that club have a lot of, uh, you know, good players coming through there as well. And the Tyrone Senior Football Championship might be, might be worth it. Uh, might be worth a, a punt or two, most definitely. Um, but yeah, I suppose to wrap up then on the on the Crow Park side of things, as I was saying before, you know, do, didn't really make too much sense in regards to not having it in Crow Park. I think they could have it in Crow Park on the Saturday, but um, they've obviously chosen to, to go with a different venue, whether it is Kings Pan Breffney or um, or Carrick on Shannon. We'll have to wait and see. And yeah, let me know your. Obviously, we'll be previewing that final a little bit later in the week, but uh, it's going to be an interesting one. And certainly, Kildare will be hoping that they can make it to under-20 All-Irelands in, what, four years? That's That would be a, a big, big statement indeed for Kildare. And given the fact that, you know, Dublin's production line has been slowing down, Kildare have already made a bit of a, you know, slow sort of um, transition to catching up to Dublin this year a little bit, you would say with a, another underage crop of players coming through, you know, all of a sudden, thing, the, the future looks quite bright for Kildare. Let's uh, let's put it that way. Darren O'Sullivan says here, Colm, 100% right on why there isn't more uh, long kicking, too many stats and analysis on turnovers. A lot of players afraid to make mistakes and take a chance at putting the ball in for the forwards to compete for it. Um, an interesting point there from... Darren O'Sullivan, obviously, uh, in response to Calm O'Rourke um, on the Sunday game. And, um, yeah, look, I mean, obviously, tactics change, sports change, sports evolve as time goes on. We've seen that um, in Hurling, obviously, in the last 10 years. We've seen that in Gaelic football now as well. And, uh, yeah, a lot more teams have, are playing like this. I mean, teams have been playing like this really for the last, you know, four or five years, and a lot more teams are, are very much catching up to it. It does seem to be the way of playing you know Dublin have, uh, have very much played like that under under Desi Farrell and certainly under the latter years of Jim Gavin in the early years of Jim Gavin there certainly wasn't the um you know Dublin were very you know just all out attack and and sort of you know will outscore you we might concede two three goals but we'll have enough forwards and enough quality in attack and enough options off the bench to outscore you Jim Gavin and Dublin certainly realized in 2014 that that was not the case and you know, towards the end of the Jim Gavin era, and in particular, certainly in the Desi Farrell era, you've seen Dublin a lot more defensive, trying to hit on the break, keeping the ball, not as much kick passing. And you've seen a lot more teams do like that. Tyrone done it last year. They've obviously have a history of playing like that. It works for them. They've won all Ireland's. It's successful. So, you know, you can't really criticize it. Um, Donegal have, have played like that. But look, at the end of the day, different teams have different variations. And for me, you do obviously need to to mix it up. And the best teams mix it up. And you've seen Kerry, for example, against Cork, kicking directly into, um, you know, David Clifford, Tony Brosnan, um, Stephen O'Brien as well. You've seen, you've seen Kerry mix it up and 
that's what you need to do, in my opinion, is you need to mix it up. You can't just have one way of playing. Otherwise, it makes it makes it too easy to uh, to be figured out. Mark Scanlon says here, just getting back to the point about Kildare, he says Kildare fans having to pay €25 Euro for under-20 All-Ireland final on Saturday and €30 Euro for Sunday's Leinster semi-game is absolutely ridiculous. And then to go with it, to have to travel to Carrick and Croker, the cost is one thing, but to travel along with it is a joke. And um, Richard... Common says here, three of the four All-Ireland Under-20 finals have been played in Crow Park. No disrespect to Breffany Park, but Kildare Tyrone should be there too. As Brian Flanagan said to media after yesterday's win, it's second grade after um, senior. And yeah, you know, and, and another issue, obviously, in regards to the ticket price as well. I mean, ticket prices have just, for whatever reason this year, you know, shot through the roof. I understand, obviously, a lot of county boards and, um clubs and and counties and and everyone really obviously needs to make you know a lot of money back from what they lost obviously during covid you know there was a full basically a full year between 2020 and 2021 of um and obviously a full championship season of of uh, of not having fans in not having ticket sales so a lot of county boards obviously need to make that money back up but you know charging ridiculous prices again just isn't the way forward it's not encouraging for for supporters and fans and you know i seen the, the west mead game obviously we're speaking about it in the podcast last week the west mead game um west mead versus longford i think was 30 euro um standing ticket i think it was and then you know the, the kilkenny galway game was cheaper so just a lot of inconsistencies in regards to uh in regards to to ticket prices um and certainly hopefully that can be addressed you know, going into going into next year. Buff Egan says here, what a brilliant and well-deserved win for Leash beating Kilkenny in the Leinster minor semi-final. A magnificent display, a glory day for Leash Hurlan. Hail, hail. And you know what? That is certainly a story that has gone under the radar massively from the weekend. Leash, what a result, what a victory. They beat Kilkenny at minor level. And not only that, it's their first win over Kilkenny at minor level, I think since, you know, the 1970s. What a you know what a story what a result and you know what a what a day for leash and you know results like that make you especially as a neutral look obviously I'm a Dublin fan of, you know I mean we 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 don't compete with Kilkenny obviously Kilkenny are a little bit ahead of us at the minute but you know as as a hurling fan as a Gaelic football fan as a GA fan you like to see new teams come along coming along you like to see you know um, young team or you know teams making a breakthrough and you know I've been saying this for a long time in hurling. Um, and, and me and Conor McKenna uh, were having this chat, obviously, um, last week on the podcast as well. Like, you're not, you know, there's rare, rarely you see shocks in hurling. You see surprises sometimes in Gaelic football, like Derry sort of coming out of blue, making a rise, building up, um, you know, and, and, and having good players and, and, and sort of creating storylines and all the rest. And you see it every now and again in Gaelic football. Carlo kind of had their own mini story there a couple of years ago. Uh, you look at the, the rise of Loud. It does. You, you do see this in Gaelic football, where you do see teams kind of make it a step up. You know, Armagh, where you know, um, not you know, you know, very much fell away, sort of at the start of you know the 2010s, 2011s. But obviously now have, have started to make significant improvements. And Donegal, sort of pre Jim McGuinness, were a team that had a lot of good players and would sometimes reach quarterfinals and all Ireland semi-finals, but. You know, that Jim McGuinness team really sort of took them to the next level and delivered a, a famous, famous All Ireland victory. But in Hurling, you just rarely ever see that. You very rarely see shocks, you know. Dublin's 2013 Leinster final maybe was a, a surprise. But even at that, when you look at, you know, the resources, the population, and obviously the, the yeah, the resources funding that's been pumped into Dublin, maybe people wouldn't see that as big of, of a shock that it was. Um, but other than that, you haven't really had many shocks at all. Like Leash beating Dublin a couple of years ago, just very, very, very little shocks. You know, Limerick coming out of blue maybe was a bit of a surprise, and you know, but it all stems from obviously investment going into underage. And Limerick's success has, has very much come from that. They won an under twenty All Ireland the year previous. Um, we've seen even that Derry team that beat Tyrone. You know, they they, they were reaching a couple of minor finals, All Ireland finals, and. Um, all the rest and, and and had a bit of uh, they didn't win any uh, all Ireland minor football champions from what I remember thanks to David Clifford but they were there thereabouts and and that is the point is you know when you invest into that 
underage structure. You bring through those younger players. Um, you put you know your money where your mouth is. As long as you obviously have it there, that you know that that can make a difference. And hopefully for a county like Leash, you know this isn't just a flash in the pan. Hopefully this is you know something the start of something special because it will be nice to see another county in Leinster. And um, being up there, being competitive and being in contention of, you know, winning a Leinster championship or being there or there or thereabouts, because you see the competitiveness of the Munster Hurling Championship at the minute. And it would be uh, it would be brilliant to see that in the Leinster Senior Hurling Championship as well. Conor McKenna, who we were just speaking about there, says Limerick could win three. All Ireland's in a row without beating a team from Leinster. 2020, they beat Clare, Tipperary, Galway and Waterford. And 2021, they beat Cork, Tipperary and Waterford. And 2022, Cork, Waterford, Tipperary so far this year. So, yeah, I mean, that would be uh, an unusual statistic. And that very much does sort of back up what I was saying there in regards to the fact that, you know, the Munster Senior Hurling Championship at the minute is just has far more competitiveness than um than the leinster championship and um you know maybe this year they would they will obviously come up against the a leinster team obviously let's not forget um you know the last time they played a team in the in or a leinster side in the all Ireland senior hurling championship they got beat against kilkenny and that is certainly a game that um a lot of people have been calling for for a while and to see limerick and kilkenny again i think would be uh would be very very entertaining and hopefully we do get to see that at uh, at some point. Uh, Podrick Marr, former Tipperary hurler himself, says, very disappointing support for our boys in Limerick today. They deserve better for 60 minutes. Was uh, For 60 minutes, they were there for us. Um, ran out of steam after pouring everything into it. Proud. Um, and yeah, you know, you were watching that game and obviously it's in the Gator grounds. Um, it was all green and, and Limerick fans really did get behind their team in the final 10 minutes. And there's certainly a county that knows how to get behind their team. Tipperary on the other hand side of things, look, you know, the, you know, Tipperary have been called out on a couple of occasions this year, not just the hurlers, but the footballers as well. You know, I think it was a, a league game where it was a double header. I think Tipperary might have been playing Cork or, or someone like that anyway in, 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 in the National League. And then ended up playing, I think Sligo it was in the um, uh, in the football, and and half the ground cleared out in in Turles. So yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on there. Obviously disappointing to see. You know, I've certainly seen Tipperary fans in their drives come up to Dublin for all Ireland finals, semi-finals, all the rest. Um, and certainly there was plenty of them that came up in that uh, 2017 All Ireland semi-final, All Ireland football semi-final. So uh, or 2016, I think it was. So. Um, yeah, a little bit strange that. Not not exactly sure why that is. I mean, I know obviously Tipperary haven't had a great year in, in Hurland this year. Three defeats from three. You know, almost certain, give or take, to, to miss out on um, or in getting out of Munster. They would need a lot of things to go in their favour to uh, to turn it around. But, but yeah, Hurler on the ditch says there was 3,000, 4,000 Tipperary supporters in Limerick today, boy, my reckoning there will be forty to 45,000 looking for tickets when we reach our next all Ireland final. To call it disappointing would be an understatement. Fair play to uh, to Paddy for uh, for calling it out there. And um, yeah, you know, that, that's exactly the point, isn't it? You know, disappointing certainly to, to not see more Tipperary fans make that travel, make that commitment. I, I don't know, for any Tipperary fans who are watching i'd be curious to know is there just a, a disconnect at the moment between uh, the county and the fans and maybe a lot of fans just aren't behind management and the players i'm not sure obviously there's a new young team i'm not too sure what it is you know I, I don't really know but um certainly hopefully they can you know get behind their team for that core game because they will they will certainly need it they obviously have to win that game and have to win it quite convincingly as well to obviously make up the the score difference as well they're on minus 20 and they obviously need Waterford to get beat twice. Um, you know, so a lot of if buts and maybes for Tipperary to, to potentially sneak into the next round of of the All Ireland series, but it does look a, a little bit a little bit unlikely at this moment in time. Uh Rory McGuire says uh Jesus, no one 
can spell Rory. Um, yeah, you know, I suppose a, a tricky name. Maybe I think, did I get the name wrong as well? Maybe I did, maybe I did. It's late on a Monday, so you'll forgive me. I'll, I'll fix it after the stream. But um, but yeah, yeah. I tell you what, certainly we will know. We will know how to spell his name in a couple of years. We'll know all about him by the looks of it. And certainly those, uh, those errors will be very much fixed because he looks like a, a tremendous, tremendous talent indeed. But um, yeah, that makes that makes about everything in terms of uh, looking at some reaction to the weekend's games, uh, discussion points and all the rest. There will be a, a podcast out tomorrow with former Kerry footballer uh, Liam Brosnan will be running through the Kerry win over to, uh, over Cork in more detail. Donegal's win over Cavan, obviously Galway's annihilation over Leitrim, the two under 20 games as well and some other GA related topics. So um, yeah, if you enjoyed the content, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you when I see you.